As far as pilot episodes go, Shogun's first two episodes are right up there. It laid the groundwork for a story set in 17th century Japan that revolves around a struggle for dominance and a clash of religions and leaders. Here we met John Blackthorne, a Protestant Englishman, one of the characters. I was intrigued by his predicament and decided to investigate the character and the actual person he was based on further because of it. John Blackthorne was inspired by a real-life story that sounds too fantastical to be true, so I decided to investigate it. Here we go. Read on for the unvarnished truth of Shogun John Blackthorne. This video contains spoilers just so you are aware. Avoid spoilers. Thus, John Blackthorne is based on a historical figure who lived in the past. This is William Adams whose 55 years of life span from Wadi 564 to Wadi 1620 is over 20 years longer than the average for his time. Before joining the Royal Navy, he worked in shipbuilding, astronomy and navigation in Gillingham. In Wendy 588, he served during England's war with Spain against the Spanish Armada. Ten years down the road in Wendy 598, he rejoined the Dutch commerce with India and led a five-ship fleet on an expedition to the Far East. Being Protestant nations that were both opposing Spain, the Dutch and the English were allies during that time. If we go ahead two years, we'll be back at the point in the show where we originally met John. The ship had been at sea for nearly two years when 23 of its crew members became ill or died in Wadi 600. They even managed to drop anchor off the coast of the Japanese island of Kyushu. There was a wide range of commodities, including tools, weaponry and trade goods on board the ship. As an example, the TV show mentioned that they had 19 cannon, but it was rounded up to 20. The concern of a threat was understandable, given that they also possessed 5,000 cannonballs and several hundred muskets. Of the original 100 crew members, 23 were either too sick to continue sailing or were already dead when they reached Japan. Of those, only nine made it to the shores of Bungo in good health. As shown on the show, the crew faced a hostile reception. Some Japanese residents and Portuguese Jesuit missionary priests even went so far as to accuse William and his crew of being pirates and called for their execution. William and the other Catholic members, as well as the Jesuits, were involved in a religious competition. Since William was a Protestant, they naturally disliked him. He was certainly labelled as such by them. This smaller scale confrontation reflected the same mentality as the Thirty Year War that raged over Europe in the mid 17th century, as is known from historical accounts. William, they believed, posed a danger to their efforts to gain control of Japan and its Catholic population. The expansion of the Catholic Church there was their goal, but William had become an obstacle. Asaka Castle imprisoned the rest of the crew as prisoners. This is different from the program. Instead of being brought to Osaka with John, they appear to be kept where they were originally stranded. However, this could alter later in the season. Tokugawa Risu met with William, the inspiration behind Toronaga's character. The son of the recently deceased Taiko was looked after by Lisu. To continue with what we saw in the pilot and second episode, Toronaga protected Yecho until he was old enough to govern. The legend goes that in 1600, between May and June, Lisu visited with William Adams multiple times, each time questioning him on his vast expertise in construction, navigation, and ship design, something that was boiled down to a single dialogue in the program. The actual William Adams described his meeting with Lisu in a letter he sent to his wife, in which he used phrases like, he viewed me well. There were numerous indicators that he gave me, and I did not always understand them all. Considering how far away his home was, he insisted on knowing where I was from and what had brought us here. After that, he wanted to know if our nation had ever been involved in a war. I told him that it was possible, even with the Portuguese and Spaniards, but that it was impossible to achieve world peace. As for how we arrived in the country, among many other things, he probed me with a wide range of inquiries about religion, culture and everyday life. Using my world map, I showed him how to cross the Strait of Magellan, which confused and led him to believe I was telling the truth. Based on what we saw in episode 2, where John was outlining his knowledge of the world, it appears that the conversation was influenced by a letter that William Adams actually wrote to his wife regarding his meeting with Lisu. According to William, Lisu rejected the execution request because to a lack of reasonable grounds. There was no international conflict and William had not caused any physical harm to the land. Therefore, he paid no attention to the Catholics who said he ought to be beheaded for his pirate ways. William and his crew's shipwreck at Bungo was actually something the SU had them sell to Edo. Unfortunately, the ship was in such bad shape that it never made it past the halfway point of the journey, and so it sank. The pilot and second episode of the series ended right here. 
obviously not while we were on board to see the ship's destruction or return to port. After some time had passed, William Adams was asked to assist in the construction of Japan's first ship in the Western style. Once finished, the ship weighed 80 tons. The next year, Adams was given the responsibility of constructing a 120-ton ship, some object that was roughly the same size as the ship William came on. When William and the other survivors reached Japan in wedding 605, they were given the opportunity to depart the country, which they took advantage of. Be careful if you don't want to know what happened next because this chapter contains spoilers for what could happen in the show. William Adams became the Shogun's personal advisor on matters pertaining to the West after he had earned the Shogun's trust and was appointed to a position of diplomatic and trade advisor. William Adams changed his perspective on the nation from when he first arrived, learned the language and accepted the culture to the point where he became the official interpreter. Even after additional Englishmen came, he still liked to be with the Japanese, so he started dressing like them. At last he had the green light to wander the palace any time he wanted and have unscheduled conversations with the Aisu. Tokugawa respected Adams, yet he denied him permission to leave the nation, unlike the other members of the crew. On the contrary, he was bestowed the power of the samurai with two swords as a reward for his devotion, expertise, insight and faith. His previous name, William, had died and he had become known under a new identity that of a samurai when he was born. William continued to send money to his wife Mary in England despite the travel ban. As he established a new identity for himself in Japan, he married another woman and had a son and a daughter with them. In his correspondence with the Japanese, William expressed his deep admiration and affection for their culture and people. I would not be surprised if we see this in the program. The character John Blackthorne used the term savage as one of his initial remarks upon arriving at the location. However, I have faith that he will eventually come to appreciate them and modify his perspective. This change and the formation of respect have been evident in just the few instances we've had. William not only helped establish trading rights and passages that linked other nations, but he also helped cultivate relationships with Tokugawa. The real story of William Adams, who served as an inspiration for the fictional John Blackthorne, shares many similarities with the fictional character. Also, William was named after his son John. I'm curious whether that's why the fictional character's name is John. After seeing the first two episodes, it's fascinating to learn more about this topic because the storytelling is so similar to the original documentation. Looking forward to seeing how far they take John Blackthorne because the program seems to be covering a lot of ground, so I'm sure it will be fascinating. Now you know the truth about Shogun John Blackthorne. Press the card in the upper right corner to access more videos on Shogun. Be remembered to check back each week for my recaps of the show, as I will be covering it regularly. You may find my breakdowns of episodes 1 and 2 up there on the 